Hi there, welcome to GGB DIY. I'm Sarah, thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm taking part in a vintage Christmas collaboration with a few of my YouTube buddies. I've created six beautiful vintage inspired DIYs that I want to share with you today. So if you wanna see how I created them, stay tuned. For this first DIY, I am working with some of these wood spools that I picked up off of Amazon. I will link them in my description box down below. I also have a stamp set that has been in my stash for a long time, and if I can link that, I will link that as well. But I am just stamping the tops of these spools with um, this round stamp and this uh, Ranger Archival ink in the color coffee. Next, I'm gonna take some gingham ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to just kind of wrap each of these spools about halfway. So I'm gonna wrap it and then kind of make sure that I can, because basically we're gonna make a wreath out of these spools. So I'm gonna make sure that there's enough wiggle room that we can make that circle, but not so much that it's like sloppy, if you know what I mean. So you just kind of have to glue and check it as you go but you're going to go all the way around and connect all of those spools together before i make the final connection with the ribbon i'm going to go through and add a little dab of hot glue in between those spools just to make sure that they're in that circle shape that i want and that they stay that way I don't want like an oval or something along the line, along those lines later on. So I'm gonna do that and then I will just add a little dab of hot glue and trim off the ribbon end. And of course we have to prettify this. Is that a word? Prettify? Prettify? <laughs> I don't know, but anyhow, I wanted to add some greenery to the top. So I'm taking some of this frosted greenery from Walmart. It is so pretty. And I'm just gonna add this in a couple berries to the top. Now I think that I made these spools look pretty vintage-y with those stamps, even though they're like post office stamps. So you're not gonna look too closely, I don't think. But um, anyhow, I think if you got your hands on some really vintage spools, like I do have some vintage spools, but they're my grandmother's and I did not want to glue them together. But if you could find some at like a thrift store or something, this is a perfect project for those vintage spools. I really love how this little ornament turned out. As I mentioned before, I'm taking part in a fun vintage Christmas collaboration with four of my YouTube buddies. We're all gonna create vintage inspired decor and DIYs for you. Our host today is Brenda over at Rustic and Lace. She is a fun crafter and if you've never checked her out, definitely go see her. And Jackie from Crafting in a Mimi's World is our co-host. She also does amazing crafts and I will link all of our channels and our playlist for today's video in my description box down below. So make sure you go check it out. For this DIY, I'm using this vintage looking deer mug that I picked up at, I think, Walmart a couple years ago, and this bottle brush tree that I picked up at the Dollar Tree at Halloween time. When I saw it at Halloween, I knew I wanted to buy it and use it at Christmas time. So here we are. <laughs> I think it's a really pretty color and I love all the sparkle on it. Anyhow, I'm taking some of these pearl-esque beads. I mean, they're like plastic pearl beads and I have no idea what size they are. Um, I have like a plethora of beads and things that people give me and I have no idea really where they come from, but I know the Dollar Tree carries some pearl-like beads in multiple sizes, so just pick some beads that you like um, in whatever colors you like for this project. And then I've got some smaller little multicolored beads and you can buy beads like this in little strings at like Joann's or Michael's. And I think even like the Dollar Tree has some of these multicolored beads. So just look around and I think you'll probably be able to find some really pretty beads to add to your Christmas tree. 
Next, I want to add some floral foam to my deer because I didn't want the tree to go all the way to the bottom. So I just cut some of that down and I'm not going to glue this in um, because I want to have the option to use this mug again in the future if I choose to. So I am not going to glue that in. And then I'm taking these silver bottle brush trees also from the Dollar Tree this year. And I'm going to add two different sized ones on the one side of my little deer here. Next, I thought I needed some little presents. So I'm taking this scrapbook paper that I had in my stash. It's like a kind of vintage looking snowflake paper and one of these square blocks from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to wrap it up like a present. After I get those tails trimmed and all wrapped up, I'm gonna add two little presents to the front of my little deer Christmas tree vignette. I guess that's what it would be kind of. And then I'm gonna double strand, make like a double strand bow of this Baker's twine from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna add this right to the top of my little Christmas tree. And that finishes this project. I love how this turned out. That little reindeer mug, that Rudolph mug, always just puts a big smile on my face. I love him so much. And with these beautiful little Christmas trees coming out, it just makes me so happy. This next project requires fabric, but no sewing. I'm gonna take this pennant banner from the Dollar Tree and use it as a template. Next, I printed my images on this Hippo heat transfer paper for dark fabrics. And I'm going to fussy cut out my Santas. So that just means cut really close to the image edging. So there's no white area. Next, you're gonna take the backing paper off. That's that grid paper. You don't want that on your image. So then you'll put your image down onto your fabric, cover it with a bit of parchment paper that comes with your Hippo transfer paper, and then you'll use your iron for 25 to 30 seconds to create the transfer. And once you transfer it on, those, those colors just pop and they are so vivid and beautiful. And Really, just such an easy project. How adorable are these Santa Clauses? I just love them. They're so jolly and so vintage and just perfect for this project. I got them off of Creative Fabrica. I um, do their monthly plan, so I'm not sure how much they were, but I will leave the link down below in case you want to grab a copy. If you use my link, I will get a little bit of a kickback uh, from Creative Fabrica with my affiliate link just an FYI, that's no extra cost to you. I just get a little extra money, so that's just a way you can support me and my channel if you choose to. We're just gonna hot glue these pennants right onto this red and white gingham ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and that will complete this project.
I love this banner. I think it is so cute and so festive. I love the colors together. The blue and white just really set off each of those little Santa faces. The only thing that I would change about this project is I would either add a double layer of fabric or add some cardstock to keep those pennants from curling up a little bit. But other than that, I love this. If you're new to my channel or coming over from another channel, Hi there, I'm Sarah. I like to do farmhouse and country cottage DIYs on a budget. So if that sounds like something you're interested in and you've liked what you've seen so far today, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and stick around a while. Please make sure to give this video a like and comment down below so that YouTube will notice me a little more. If you wanna follow me on social media, you can find me over on Instagram. And my friend Lisa and I have a Facebook group called Crafty DIYs on a Budget where anyone can join and we would love to have you. For this fun DIY, I purchased this mini vintage book kit from an Etsy seller. I will link their uh, store down below, so if you wanna go grab your own, you can. I cut out a piece of cardboard. Basically, this is packaging from um, some fruit bars that we eat, and so I just cut it down, and I will leave the dimensions of each of the pieces down below so that if you do want to use this um, kit you can follow along exactly how I did it although the seller does have some instructions that come with the kit so I am just cutting out a white piece of paper to cover that bit of cardboard and then I'm gonna clip the corners. So you just go almost to the very corner. You wanna leave just a teeny tiny bit of paper. You can see that there. And then we're just gonna use some glue. You can use whatever kind of glue you like. I like to use this wet glue. This is my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And it dries really quickly and is a really great wet glue. It's a little expensive, but I really love to use it for paper crafting. So. Um, but a glue stick or any other kind of glue that you want to use would work perfectly here. So we're just going to glue down those little flaps. Just add some glue and then press it and fold it over. And then we're just going to fold our book right in half. This is so cute. I love these little mini books. They're so adorable and you could use them if you have like little girls that do the um, like 18 inch dolls. These are perfect for them or Barbies or if you just want some little decor for a tear tray. These little books are perfect and they're so easy to put together. So here is one of the uh, covers and I'm just going to glue that right to the outside of our cardboard piece. And it comes with like a little inside papers that you can glue down. And then you just cut out a piece of paper, fold it in half for your little pages. And then it comes with two graphics for each book, which is so cute. So it looks like there's actually like book pages in your book. So just add a little bit of glue to the spine and then place that in your book. And then you'll just wanna let that dry. Don't close it on top of each other because um, it'll glue the pages down, but you just kinda of set it down in there and let it dry. I wanted to make these into ornaments, so I'm going to use some of this red and white baker's twine. And I'm gonna just hot glue that strictly, or like strictly, straight down the middle of my book. So I'll just put a little bit of hot glue and then my hanger. And how adorable is that? So easy and so cute and perfectly vintage. Like they're all little vintage books. Like I remember having some of these books when I was a kid. If you remember having any of these books, let me know down in the comments below. I know I had the Frosty and the Santa's Toy Shop and I know I had Rudolph and The Night Before Christmas. So it was kind of fun to see those old um, book fronts. <laughs> They're like the little golden books. So cute. For this DIY, we're going to take some of these mini frames. So I think they're like place card 
holder or like placeholders for weddings, like seating and stuff, but I'm gonna use them as photo frames. So I cut out some images that I um, downloaded from Creative Fabrica. Again, I will leave the link for that um, designer down below. So if you wanna buy these exact same images, you can. Um, and then, you know, anything that I use throughout this video will be in my description box below. I try really hard to make sure that I get everything that I use down in that description box. But if I don't mention something you're interested in, just leave me a comment or email me and I will get back to you and let you know what I have used, if I can. <laughs> After we get our image placed into the frame and everything put back, we're going to hot glue one of these sparkly festive Chanel stems around the outside edge of this frame. So I picked up these Chanel stems from the Dollar Tree and on this frame, you, you may not be able to tell, but there is actually a little lip that the Chanel stem just sits perfectly in. So that's what I was using as my guide. And I'm just going to hot glue and place that all the way around the frame. And you'll see here in just a second that the Chanel stem doesn't actually go all the way around the frame. And I knew that ahead of time because I did check it to make sure um, but we're going to fix that here in just a few minutes. But first I decided that I needed a little extra beautification on this frame. So I'm going to take one of these, uh, another one of these Chanel stems in red, and I'm going to go along the inside lip of this little frame. So we're gonna take some of this glittered greenery from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna add it to this corner where the Chanel stems didn't meet. And I thought that this was a perfect addition to these frames. I felt it really um, helped to bring in that vintage vibe with the greenery. And then I'm gonna add a berry as well from the Dollar Tree. And I think it just really sets off these frames. Now I did three different ones and you'll see each um, option here in just a few minutes. I was originally gonna make these into ornaments, which I think would be really lovely, um, but I decided that I actually like them as little picture frames. So I'll probably just stick them in little spots around my house where I just wanna add a little more Christmas cheer and charm. But here's a look at all three of them complete. I really love how these turn out. And the images are just super beautiful and perfect for your vintage Christmas. And we've come to our last DIY of the day. I'm taking this square frame that I bought from Michaels in their 99 cent area. I had painted it green and was doing something different on it and it kind of didn't turn out how I wanted. So I just had it sitting there and I decided that I was gonna use it today. So I took a piece of sheet music that I also purchased from Creative Fabrica and I put that in the back of my frame. Next I painted, I, I painted two of these little snowmen from the Dollar Tree. They're the little 3D wood snowmen that they came out with this year and I was so excited I finally got my hands on. But um, I ended up only using one. So I painted them white, a little black hat, and then painted a little carrot nose on there and now I'm just going in with a stylus and making the little eyes and mouth and buttons. So I'll use the smaller side of the stylus for the eyes and mouth and the bigger for the buttons. Every snowman needs a little scarf, so I'm taking some of those sparkly Chanel stems and I'm just going to wrap one around his little neck and create a little scarf out of it. So cute. 
Next, I'm going to take these very glittery, very sparkly little bottle brush trees that I picked up at the Dollar Tree, and I am going to hot glue the base right into the bottom of my square frame here. And next comes the fun but oh so messy part of the project. So I'm just using some regular Mod Podge here and I'm just dabbing it all over the base of this frame on the little tree stands and around my little snowman. I'm getting as much of that Mod Podge in there as possible because in a few seconds, you're gonna see what I'm gonna do. Crazy lady, I'm going in with the faux snow. I am going over a bin to add my snow and then I will just let it attach to the Mod Podge and tap out whatever is extra. Next I added a little candy cane striped bow. This ribbon came from the Dollar Tree as well to the top of my little frame. And that completes this super adorable little shadow box project. I really love this one. I think it is so cute. And I, I don't know, I just love the little snowman. He's really adorable. I hope you let me know which project was your favorite today down in the comments below. I also hope that you'll go check out all of the ladies' channels with their vintage inspired DIYs. I know you will love each and every one of them and you will not regret it. If you wanna see a couple more videos, here's a couple for you to watch. I hope you have a happy, healthy, and blessed day and I will talk to you next time. Bye.